G'day guys, welcome back. I am going to try and make some silicon molds for my resin coasters. Now I've just been out and I've bought this, it's a silicon mat for baking. So on this side it's a bit textured and on the other side it's nice and shiny. So that's the side that I'm going to pour my resin into. Uh, this is it here, well this is the box anyway, let me get around the table. It is a Wiltshire silicon baking mat for kneading and ro rolling dough. So that's what it came in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically use my set of coasters here that I made the other day. I'm just going to put them on. And I don't have six of those, so I've got two of these purple ones as well that I made. So we'll just even those or space them evenly. Try and sort of have the same amount there as there as there. So about that. Does that look about straight? Looking down on it from an angle probably doesn't look as straight as what I can see, but hopefully she might need a little bit more room in the middle. Okay, so now what I want to do is, I mean, if you were very pedantic about it, I guess you could get your ruler out and, and measure, make sure that everything was equal distances apart. When I put my silicone on, though, it's going to be a little bit closer, so I'll just do that. All right, fiddle with them. Okay. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to draw around that with a pen because I don't think a, a pencil would actually show up on this. So we'll just draw around that. So I'm going to make some geode shaped coasters. So you know the ones with the little jaggedy edges. Although because I'm using a silicone corking gun um, I won't really be able to get very intricate jagged edges so do the best that I can all right so that's them here we go look at that Woohoo! put these aside okay so um, so that's a geode edge there it's quite jagged but uh, we won't be doing it quite that jagged just won't be able to get it that intricate with the corking gun. Now, the silicon I'm using is, again, I'll just get around the back of the table so I can actually see, make sure it's in frame for you. This is the Sellies multi-purpose 100% silicone. And it says it's for, oops, sorry about that glare. Oh my gosh, that ring light. Glass, roofs, gutters, concrete, bricks, wet areas, neutral, cure. So I'm going to use that. But before we get on to that, <clears throat> we need to make our little design. So with a Sharpie or a marker that's not going to rub off, this is where the fun begins. We start, we follow basically our circle, but we just sort of put in our little jagged areas so some will go above the line some will go below the line and as I said oh it's oh that's not working hang on I'm gonna have to find I thought a sharpie would write on that hang on let me find something else the sharpie might work actually it's just it doesn't look as if it's um it's not rubbing off though anyway, I'm just gonna go with this one it's just an art line sharpie whatever it just doesn't look as if it's very What's the word? You can kind of see through it. All right, here we go. It's going to make some little lines. Just however you want it. it. I've probably got a little bit too much detail in that one, but it doesn't matter. Once you start piping, it'll just go as it goes. Or corking, I should say. So basically, they're going to be round, but just with a few little jaggedy edges to make them into geodes so whatever you like the look of really 
I'm not really planning it. My hand's just doing its own thing. It's just going where it wants to go. Whoops, that's a little bit of a point there. So you see what I mean? You just sort of do just whatever. You know, if you don't particularly like your line that you've got, once it comes to corking the silicone out, then you can change it a little bit if you want to. And there we go. Right. I don't think that's going to wipe off. Nope. It's staying on. So the next thing we need to do is get a sharp blade and slice the top off our silicone tube. If you haven't done these before, I'm just going to use this little knife. Be really, really careful. Don't hold it like that and try and do it. I'm just going to sort of do it off to the side here. Hopefully this knife will go through. This is a timber board I've got here, so hopefully it will go through. Maybe not. I'll just slice it. There we go. Hopefully I'm not. Oh, look at that. Halfway through. Let's turn it. Oh, there we go. Put the knife away. So that's the end gone. So this is a clear silicone. So if you were using this little attachment, which you certainly could, or you could just go like that. But I think you need a little bit of height to, so that you, this doesn't hit the... Um, the board. So what I'm going to do is, because I want it nice and thick, I'm going to slice it about there. Again with my little knife. Because what I, I want coming out of here, see if I only had it like really, really small. Let me get around here again so I can explain. See it's a really, really tiny tip, which means I'm only going to tiny little bit of silicone out, which means what's, oh, that three mil or something and I want these to be at least six mil so I'm gonna slice it further up so that the amount coming out is going to be thicker. I'm just gonna press into it and then slice around. So just be really careful when you're using knives guys. If you're not confident with them just ask somebody else in your household to do it. Okay, so there I've got, see I've got a really nice wide opening now. You can stick my little finger in it. <laughs> That's how wide it is. So that should give us a nice um, sort of round of silicone. Hey, hope so. So that just screws on there, like so. So now we'll be able to actually touch the... We don't really want to touch it, but you can follow that around without having this knocking on there. Now, the other thing you need to do is you need a corking gun. And I don't mean cork as in C-O-R-K. I mean cork as in C-A-U-L-K-I-N-G. Corking. <laughs> now, I'm just pushing this up. Really, I really don't know very much about this. I haven't done much siliconing. Oh, look, it's coming out already. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that's quite a big amount. Let's go. So I'm going to have to squeeze this and try and make a pattern as I'm going. But it should be a nice amount, like a nice height to come out. And you get to about there, and then you have to release the trigger, and then you have to go again. That's the only thing I don't really like about these. Is you have to stop start stop start and you can see how you can't really make a, a very defined mm, line that wasn't very good I'm gonna have to go over that little bit again I kind of dragged it a little bit now you should and I haven't actually got one with me now but you should actually have a little bowl of water with some dish soap in it so I've got a little bit of water in there with my dish soap and it kind of feels a bit slimy. So if you do need to smooth anything, like over here where I've gone over twice, I've got like a, a ridge and then another ridge. So I'm going to try and just 
smooth that otherwise when the geode side will have like a bump in it I don't really want that so I'll see if I can just make that a smooth little wall there for it and hopefully that will work it's a little bit higher there I'm just going to push that over and make that about the same height okay I guess I can fiddle with these off camera. Oops, I wanted that to be out there, didn't I? Let's see if we can just push it out. And then we'll run in like that. So we should, really should have a piece of paper towel or something. So if you make a, a mistake and you need to clean your silicone mat, you can get a little alcohol wipe, one of these. And um, once it's dry, I'm not going to do it now, but once it's dry, then you can just clean off any excess. All right. Um, let me get a piece of paper towel. Very organized, am I? I didn't know what I needed until I went. See, it's got a little bit coming out. I'm just going to wipe that off so it starts smooth. Okay, <laughs> let's try again. And I'll try not to drag it because dragging makes it um, go a little bit like lower. And I want to keep the height. So just try not to drag there we go look now I'm doing it I'm doing it you guys I'm just holding the gun up above it and I'm trying not to push down and then there I'm just going over actually I did push down a little bit there I can see it's a bit lower and then I'm just going to do that Yeah, where I, I stopped, I kind of dragged it a bit. So that bit there is a little bit lower. The only problem is if you have one, one wall that's a little bit lower, you know, that's that's the height that your coast is going to be. So try and make them all about the same height. If you notice one that's a little bit lower than the others, you can just, you know, push it like that and make it a little bit higher. And then try and make your inside wall smooth. And go out a little bit there to make a little bit of a geode bump. So that's not just round. Okay, two down. Let's go again. I think this side is easier because the corking gun is in front of the little tube, little worm, whereas I go the other way and she might stop there. When I go the other way, the um, tube's behind the worm. I'm going to call it the worm. Let's go this way. I think that's also what my problem might be because I'm pushing it rather than pulling it there we go yeah that's better because i didn't have those flat areas there where i, I joined it now do you want to see the rest or will i fast forward oh you might as well watch hey why not now that i know what i'm doing i'll go a little bit faster okay, here we go I'll just try and keep the gun in front of the silicone <coughs> worm. So you can't really follow your design very well. I mean, you can try, but it's not really doing it. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. I forgot to stop. It's hard to stop. All right, now, it worked all right. Very handy to have your little bowl of 
soapy water there. And it is much easier to, you know, check all your, your edges and things now before you, before it dries. So I won't pour in these until tomorrow. I want them to set nice. And I am hoping that this silicone will stick to the silicone mat. And silicone sticks to silicone, doesn't it? Okay, now I'm getting the hang of this, you guys. Look at that. Look at me go. Look at me go. Fast now. Make another little indentation in there. Just using the back of my, my nail, like to push, put the soapy water on my nail and then push, push it out to where I want it to go. Right, last one, you guys. <gasps> if it's working you just have to practice there we go it's dribbled a little bit I was just about to finish the video and then I looked in and I saw that my sides, because the silicone's rounded, I think the um, resin might sort of go in underneath. I really need to have straight sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wet my finger and I'm going to just go around and make sure that my sides are straight because I don't want the resin, you know, like going in underneath if it's round. Because the resin, if it's, if it's round, the resin will kind of go in under there. Does that make sense? So I'm just going around. Bronte. Go around all the way. And make sure that my sides are straight. You can still keep your shape, but you're just basically making sure that they're, the sides go up and down and they're not rounded, that's all. Because you should be able to use these this mould again and again. I'm going to actually see if I can bring you down a bit closer and, so that you can see what I'm doing. I'll put you down here on the side of the, the bench. I've already done these first two, so you really don't need to see those. I'll just zoom you in on these ones. So wet your finger. Follow it. So you're just pushing back a little bit. Go slow, otherwise you'll push back too much. Now, I haven't learned this from anybody, like doing this. It just seems to me that it needs to be done. Or well, my sides are not going to be straight. Okay, so that's those four done. Move on here. And I guess it, it also just makes sure that you haven't got any little gaps underneath the silicone that may leak. Like your resin may leak from. I'm using my nail as a guide. kind of pushing in you'll get the feel for it once you start doing it for yourself you'll you'll see what I mean just making that edge straight so you've got a bit of work time not sure how long it takes till it sets it says fully cured in 72 hours but oh if it's if it's dry tomorrow morning, I'm going to pour into it. 
I guess if you were, it might be an idea to do the outsides as well, just to make sure that, you know, you're getting a good, a good seal. I might just run around the outside as well. Just to help that silicone seal onto the, the mat a little bit, giving it a little bit of pressure. I don't know if that'll help or not, but it can't hurt. I'll bring it down in a minute so you can see what it looks like from my side. So even these outside edges now, they are straight rather than being curved. And I can also kind of just, you know, if there's a low section like over there, I can actually push it back up and make it a little bit higher. So that's a good thing too. You can kind of feel where some are a little bit higher than others. Look over here, it dips down a little bit. So let's push that back up. So I am hoping I can reuse these molds. Hopefully they'll just, the resin will just pop out. Hope so. And then I can reuse them, hey? Well, I hope you guys have found this little video informative or useful. As I said, I'm no expert at this. This is my first time. Um, but I think, you know, you do something and you learn from it learn what works, learn what doesn't work, and you come up with little things to make it work as you go along, and I'm happy to share those little tips with you. Okay, so that, that's looking good. Let's go down and have a look. I'll have to come back out a bit. It's a bit too close. Okay, so you can see so the edges are now sitting flat against pink silicone mat. Actually, I might have missed it. Did I miss this one? I don't think so. I don't think I did. Maybe I did. Hopefully that's picking it up. You can see how the the inside is like that wall there is flat. The inside wall is flat on all of them. So it's sitting down nicely on that pink mat. So hopefully um, it'll stay. When I pull the coasters out, hopefully they will just pop out easily. Phew, that was nerve wracking. <laughs> Oh, I did it. All right. Hopefully that helped everybody. Um, I'll pour on them tomorrow, okay? And we'll see what they, how they turn out. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys. Welcome back. It's the next day. And my silicone has set. I guess because it's a silicone, it's always going to remain a little bit squidgy. So you can press that. But look at this. Look at that. Let me take you in for a little bit of a close-up here, actually. I'll show you if I can get any closer. Look at that bond there. I mean, I'm not going to pull too much, but I don't think they would come off. Silicone actually sticks to silicone. So, yay! Which means I can reuse these. And because it's on the silicone mat, um, when I pour my resin in to my coasters um, it's not going to move like it's going to stay put you know if I'm because look I'm, I'm pushing that like that and it's not really moving if I had to use acetate or something like that I'd have to actually tape all the edges to hold it in place but that should just stay so now today we're going to do the water test I've got my water I'm going to put one drop of alcohol ink in it just so that we can actually see um, if we have any leaks so you do need to do this I know it's a bit of a pain but you do need to do this otherwise you might waste a whole heap of resin and a beautiful resin coaster 
let's just do one <laughs> uh, you know if, if it leaks so just I need a stirrer here we go oh doesn't dissolve very well in water <laughs> those little chunks um I don't really want little chunks in it let me get I'm just gonna go and get some um, blue food coloring wait one sec I'm back a little bottle of food coloring and let's just put one drop in the water in you go go sunk to the bottom okay i might keep this in my studio actually for testing oh that's much better that dissolves all right don't use don't use um alcohol ink i guess it makes sense like you know alcohol and water they don't really mix do they okay so that's our beautiful blue water now the test here we go. So I'll put about half full in because when I pour resin in, I'm not going to go all the way to the top anyway. Whoops, I have to make sure I've got enough. Oh, I don't think I've got enough. I haven't got enough. Oh, I'm going to have to go and get some more water. Might have a bit more. Right. Here we go. I don't want to put too much in, then it's going to get, you know, it's going to be too difficult to um, to empty it. But when, I'm going to give this, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, um, and then I'll come back, and then I'll just get some paper towel, and I'll fold it up, and then I'll put it in, and that'll soak them all up. Um, that's, that's, I think, the only, well, the best way to, um, to empty those. But, so far, so good. I don't see any leakage. But that's why you just need to put a bit of food colouring in, you know, because obviously it's clear, the water's clear. Um, and you're not going to really see if, if it leaks. So, so far, it all looks good. I guess if it was going to leak, it would have done it by now, hey? All right, I'll come back in 10 minutes and uh, just to be sure. I'm back it's been about five minutes I went and folded all some pieces of paper towel <laughs> and um, yeah I don't see any leaks at all so yay <laughs> it's gonna be ready to pour so just make sure you do this step um, because you know you can reuse these over and over and you want them to be you want them to be good you want them to work I just spilled a bit of water that wasn't a leak <laughs> But you can see, definitely see if there's any leakage problems. So just do that. Push your paper towel into all the little crevices and nooks, nooks and crannies. Um, and then, yeah, then you have a nice dry coaster. Um, and then maybe use a hairdryer or a heat gun something like this just to dry it if you want to pour straight away because you don't want any water residue in there for, before you pour um, but if you're not going to pour straight away you know, it'll just dry out on its own okay um, wish me luck I'm going to pour on these shortly so hope you enjoyed that little video and these work great and I'm so happy with the height and the shape oh the only thing I think I probably could have improved on was do this on the outside of my line because it's kind of on the middle so they're a little bit smaller than I would have liked um, but still they're, they're a decent size and I'm really really happy with my first attempt so thanks for watching I'll see you real soon bye for now